I'm Dave Reedy, and I'm joined by my co-host, or the panellist for today, Adrian O'Sullivan. Hi, right, Davey, how's things? Not too bad, now you're all excited today, now you're kind of changing your seats. Now, <laughs> you're, you're yeah, look, uh, it would look a bit suspicious now if I was firing out the questions here, so I suppose I've sent you on a bit of a solo run this week to see what you could dig up about us, uh, so it'd be interesting, I'm looking forward to seeing what you have on us though, yeah. Anyways, we, we, we kick on. If you're listening to the podcast, anyways, please subscribe, uh, share it on social media. And if you're listening to the YouTube, give it a like and share it as well. Um, as, as always, your support is, makes everything, everything we do possible. Um, so today, we have two fantastic guests. 2014 was an incredible year for Limerick Camogie in general. And we're joined by two great, greats from Limerick Camogie and who had a huge impact on and off the field. Yeah, uh, look, the two, the two lads who joined us today, I know Sheila and Fiona, what they've done on and off the field for Limerick Camogie is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, good crack as well to manage and good crack off the field as well. So look, I think, uh, I think we're in for a good one. So suppose we get them in. Excellent. We'll go straight into them, so. Okay. So again, we have Sheila Meinhen, Limerick's Player of the Decade, and Fiona Hickey, who won t- 2014, was the first Limerick player in any court to go up the steps of the Hogan in September um, in over 18 years. You're both very welcome to the podcast and really appreciate her time coming along and joining us. You love saying that, David, didn't you? Well, Limerick's not going up the head steps the whole for 18 years. <laughs> Big time, yeah. But it's obviously changed a small bit since, but... Um, anyways, I'm going to rewind your minds back to uh, 2005 in, in August. You, had a, you were playing Cork and it was scoreline of 5.17 to Limerick's five points. So again, I liked, I liked that kind of jibe as well, but... That was an All Ireland semi final, and a game that uh, featured your, yourself, uh, Sheila, and a uh, very young Neve Mulcahy as well. Um, I think Sheila, you, you had your first appearance in the Sunday game after after that night. <laughs> and one of my biggest regrets in life is telling Tully and Willie Max about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I, was, I was 15 and I let in a few soft goals and I got slated at the Sunday game. <laughs> it was it was nearly the end of me, but I came back anyway. <laughs> Kind of it's actually crazy to think that like it's actually it was okay to actually nationally slay a fifteen year old on the Sunday game. I, they probably didn't know I was fifteen to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> like so, like sometimes I look at the at the tourgers in school and I'm like, who in God's name let me play senior in the county Camogie at fifteen? <laughs> yeah, it's different times. Was even McDonald had an all in the middle in her back pocket yeah, by that stage. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. It is different times. Like that would not happen now. Like there's kind of most definitely that's. <laughs> We're struggling in Limerick to get minors into that to mind anyone that's yeah. 15. <laughs> um, Fiona, uh, Grana Balangari was a serious force um, in the club scene around that time as well. You had four All-Ireland finals in seven years and tri- three All-Ireland titles. Um, I suppose you kind of seen the senior team struggling. Um, what was the kind of attitude towards the county team at that time on your, by yourselves? Um, yeah, I thought it was very well at the time. It was um, the real glory days. Um, but regards to county, we always would have thought highly of the county setup, regardless of you know big losses like that. I think as a club, it was always well regarded if you were a member of the county panel, which was great because I know there are some clubs in Limerick, I say to this day, even who'd be like, "Oh Jesus, you look at your one, she's not playing county." you know, who does she think she is like, but it was never like that um, with Granada and Gary anyway. So we always would have had a, a real high regard for our county players and always would have been fairly well represented. Um, but I suppose it was nice to be able to go back to club and be able to be seeing some really good performances there with club at the time when the county wasn't going so well as well, you know. Exactly, yeah. Um, again, I'll fast forward a small bit now. So back to 2012. Um, autumn 2012. Can you remember the state the county Camogie was in this time, Sheila? Uh, I can't specifically remember 2012, but um, I know in, in general it was probably pretty poor. Um, like even when you asked me to do this study, I was thinking about the teams. Like the players we had were on un, like unreal. Like Rose Collins, Vera Sheehan, Eileen O'Brien. Like we had serious, serious players, and we could just never. I don't know. Like sometimes we'd, we'd string it together a few performances, but like we were always caught out because we never had the proper preparation done. Um, so like sometimes I remember, I think it was 2011, um, we lost the Ireland semi-final to a last minute goal um, to um, up in Ashburn, I think it was. So it was probably fairly low, I'd imagine, <laughs> in 2012, like it was a lot of the time, to be very honest about it. But yeah, it wasn't a great place. I think Joe Quaid then got, got to manage the, the Limerick Senior or the Limerick Intermediates, but how, how did that come about? Because I, I know we talked to JJ Dye last night and 
when he became manager, uh, he was kind of thought he was on the actual committee and um, to pick the manager, and he actually came up came as manager. So how did how did uh, Joe come come about? <laughs> Sheila, uh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> that was like probably yeah. on the committee. Who was he? <laughs> yeah, I think, I, think that's, I can't remember, but I, I vaguely remember him being asked to kind of help out. As far as I can remember, Joe was in the county GA board at the time. Yeah, he was with um, under fourteen or something. I think. Yeah, and he'd been with obviously. He, I think. Yeah, that was it. That was he'd been with oh, team that, uh, uh, and they won the under sixteens, and he hadn't got the minor job. Minor job. Um, oh yeah. And yeah. I suppose maybe someone Sean was going to act maybe quickly and invite him onto a committee to pick the manager, but there was probably no. There's probably no other candidate. Yeah. I, I can't remember the exact story, but it was something like that it was very similar to JJ's. Anyway, JJ's story he was on a he was on a committee to pick a manager, and he, like nobody wanted it. Believe it or not, in 2009, which is crazy. They went down to dominate so much, I suppose. But we've been there ourselves, but yeah, we're <laughs> a different force. <laughs> yeah, they weren't that different though. Like you know, you can see remember from last week's. I suppose look, they they took a it took a serious trimming for them to get their act together as well. In '99 as well, so it's not a dissimilar story in many ways. But um, yeah, it's interesting. That's how we ended up. Anyway, it's, a, it's, yeah. it's nearly typical of the GA, though. Like it's the only kind of sport that you think about. You're on the, a committee, <laughs> pick a manager, and you end up. Yeah, being, you end up like, being the manager. Yeah. Coin yeah. toss. Take a name out of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you want, in 2013, like Joe had a great start to. Uh, to his camp or his campaign is or his management. Uh, he won the Division Two League and reached uh, All Ireland final against Galway. Uh, can you remember any of them games? Um, I suppose just back to Joe starting off. Like I'll never forget actually him starting off because for the first time it probably resembled a fairly professional setup. Um, I'll never forget. Um, it was actually Willie Banks's hurley shop <laughs> at the time. He was selling hurleys and he was a selector. And I, I broke a hurley at training or something, and Joe was like, "Should just go get a new one there." And I was like, sure, we, we had never once been given hurdies or never once been Jeez. given money to our hurdies. I was like, oh, sure, you know, I'll have to wait and go up to Newtown Chandra. So, go in there to Willie Banks, he'll give you a hurdy. I, so we were going in getting three, four, five hurdies. I'd say, Jim O'Brien had 17 hurdies at one stage. <laughs> it was such a novelty just to be able to get like free hurdies. Like that's the, that's the, that, that level of professionalism we were so impressed with. And that is so like, that's nothing these days, you know, but I just, I'll never forget that with Joe. And he just, he, they, he got money thrown at us, like probably to the detriment of the county board in some ways, but that was just what he was used to coming from a male setup. So he could not get over the lack of money or the resources that was put into us. And to be fair to him, anything we wanted that year, we pretty much got like, so that was really, really good. Like coming into 2012, 13, and then getting to the honor and final, like, again, we got great support, great money was thrown behind us. We got great sponsors. Another funny story about Joe, he said we got new sponsors for jerseys and he said, Hickey, he's like, where's your favorite place in Limerick? And I was like, <laughs> the icon. <laughs> and he's like, that's our new sponsors. So it's Smith's icon, our new sponsors. And I remember they we had a fortune as well, didn't they? They paid an absolute fortune for, for yeah, one yeah. game, yeah. yeah. But we spent a fortune in there as well, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> you just gave it back. And that's yeah. all that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And um, so that was uh, 2013. Then we got down and finally we did a nice photo shoot and everything. I remember the GA grounds in, in the Gaelic grounds in Limerick before. It was really professional. It was nice. It was really good time. And I remember, obviously, we were so disappointed after losing the match. Um, we only lost by a point or two, was it? I think it was always kind of nip and tuck. But at the same time, I don't know about you, Sheila. I always kind of had a feeling that we weren't going to win that day. I don't know, was it just, I suppose yeah, it was... I, I was under a bit of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. well, if you look back at that Galway team, like, we, oh, we were looking at it for something there the other day. Like, of the team that won last year, they had Tara Kinney, who obviously missed the final last year, through injury, but would have been playing only for that. Shauna Healy, Teeny Cormican, Rebecca Henley, Maria Cooney, and Aoife Dunhu, and Orla McGrath came on as a sub and yeah, senior final exactly. after. Yeah. That is a ridiculous team. Won. That's what you want of an intermediate team. Like, you know, that's exactly yeah. like they were playing against, obviously, their like, seniors. The like, yeah, yeah mm. so their, their training sessions must have been savage altogether. But, um, and they had lost the year before as well. So they'd re they were really hungry, I think, I suppose. Mm. So that kind of probably tipped them over the line on the day. But I suppose the day after, 
we were just counting down the days to get back to Crow Park again. I'll never forget that, I suppose. We did visit the Icon <laughs> for maybe a day <laughs> after. <laughs> and we were inside the place and we were just like, geez, it's only 364 days until Crow Park again. We were that kind of, it was a great experience, but like we were confident about getting back there again the following year, I think. Many good plans have come over that place. <laughs> Yeah. I'm actually a small but kind of shocked Fiona like you kind of mentioned that you can remember taking a photo shoot in the Gaelic grounds like so was that was Gaelic grounds kind of something that you you seen as something magic in a way um, I suppose we hadn't seen it much to be honest yeah um, just being in there and even like God, even, I suppose, back then, yeah, seeing the dressing rooms inside there and being able to train inside there, maybe playing, I'd say we played the odd match there. That was, yeah, that was a really big deal at that time as well. It was really, I suppose, the time when Camogie was really getting, I suppose, Sheila was on the Sunday game all right in 2005, but I suppose since then, <laughs> things were starting to improve greatly. Like, so it was nice to be inside in the Gaelic grounds and doing things like that. You just kind of, there was an air of, I suppose, as I said, professionalism about it. So it was nice, yeah. You were starting to knock around the Clare senior panel at this stage, Dave, you're in 13, 14. Like, so, like, is it, is it mind-blowing for you to hear that this is the level that Cody was at, I suppose, at this stage? That's the thing, because it was kind of like, I, I suppose I just joined the under-21s, and, like, most of our trainings would have been in Cusick Park, and that was probably a good couple of, that wasn't a, a day before a championship game or something, that was weeks, weeks before it. The Clare Intermediates trained in Cusick Park um, before, like they used to play before the, the Clare Seniors and like it was literally nothing new going to Cusick Park. It wasn't a big deal. We trained there, we played there. Um, that's the only reason I, I, I kind of elaborate on that. Mm. Um, but at that time, Willie Banks took over the minors as well. Um, as a senior player, like he, he had got a few decent results. Could you see something magic kind of happening with the minors as well? Yeah, like at that time, I just remember being in like a bubble for the whole year. And we were just all in the same, you know, everyone's just on the same mind, mindset. And it's so hard to even create that. Like, it's easy to say, oh, yeah, we'll just do that again. But like, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. But I remember the lads had like Cueva, Coslo, Zimmelas, Rebecca Delee. Like, we could see them, like Rebecca, uh, Deborah Murphy, Karen O'Leary. Like, we, they were with us all the time. We knew who they were. We were going to their matches. Like, there was a real buzz about the whole thing. Um, it was just all three panels were connected, which I think is really key. And it's a big thing that Limerick are lacking at the moment is that there's three very separate panels. Um, but in, at that time, it was a clear kind of what you were saying earlier about Galway. Like, it was the pathway to. To the, and the when we were intermediate at the time was the flagship team like and that was the team that we, everyone was trying to, to boost and to get to um so yeah i just remember being in, in a bubble kind of and we were all in the same mindset and like it was Komogi number one and it didn't matter if what else was going on around us like but yeah we would have been very aware of those young players coming up definitely yeah. but that, that like that whole thing creates a massive culture and like a culture to drive the success of Limerick Camogie. It's not just driving one team. It, like it has to yeah. be admired. Because um, even the, la- the lads of Fairness had, had it set up for it really well. Like I remember doing water for minor games. Like mm-hmm. Fiona, you were the same. Doing water for the junior games. Like we were all, we were all one panel as such, even though we were three different teams, which also is a really hard thing to do. But they, they did it really well at that time, I thought. And Adrian, you kind of got, you, that's your stage when you kind of started off with the minors as well. Yeah, by accident, really, to be honest with you. It's a good team to start off with. <laughs> yeah. Completely by accident. I, the only, it's funny, 2005, like, that was the only Limerick Camogie match I'd ever been at. And the only reason I was at it, to be completely honest, was because it was on after the minor under 21s were on, was it? Minor Hurlers beat Dublin. Was minor Hurlers, yeah. Minor Hurlers, yeah. Minor Hurlers, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was awful stuff, like, you got an awful trim and a table after 2025. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'd worked a bit with Willie with the Limerick under 16s so when I was working for the GA, and uh, we went down to a hand one night, I was playing with him. At the time, down for a puck around, and there was a match on. I think you were playing leash blow on the small field, the sloped field. Man. Oh my god! <laughs> they didn't even give you the nice one, but anyway. Um, and I just remember seeing this one playing centre forward. It was like Quiva Costello. I, I saw Willie there, and I was like, "What are you doing here?" Because the story is like, oh, yeah, "I'm kind of involved with these." And I was like, Who's that one, I draw when you meet someone you haven't met for years. Like, yeah, sure, I'll see you for a coffee or I'll see you for a pint, whatever. So I gave Willie the old kind of throw away. Sure, look, if you're ever draw a stuff for an old session or anything, sure, give me a shout. Caught in a morbid, and sure, a month later, stand up in front of the parents, tell them we're going to win the All Ireland, and they look at me, <laughs> two heads of me. And you know, I think back in the time, it was just absolute, pure and utter naivety from my point to think that because it was minor Camogie, we just go in and win it. Like that, it was just, sure, look, 
and sure so the parents had never before had heard that like it. it's not how we were in Toronto straight away because it was probably <laughs> actually off for a game like, you know but yeah that's how it started because actually when, when that team were under 16 I actually was coaching them for a while because they couldn't get anyone to do it like <laughs> that, that team that team that won the minor like there was a few <laughs> parents there was a few parents involved I was about 21 like <laughs> so I, I coached them <laughs> so they're telling them to go to win their Ireland <laughs> <laughs> So it's from your great coaching. Uh, oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's really what I was trying yeah, to get yeah, in there. Yeah. Set the foundation. <laughs> yeah. uh, There's no so modest, Sheila. Say again, Fiona? I'm saying Sheila's so modest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sully, in, in 2014, you took on Cork in the all Ireland final. Um, you kind of ruffled a few feathers on the way. Oh, it was like, I think to this day, it was the best crack I've ever had involved in any team. And like, again, it's just... It's just pure naivety. It was just like we had an arrogance born out of the fact that we just didn't know any different. Like I think they were a class group and all they needed was someone, I suppose, that hadn't a clue what they were doing in a way to kind of come in and go, forget about this poor old Limerick. We're just going to come yeah. in now and And he no ties to anything. Like, you know, he he's no ties. We, know, we weren't carrying any of this baggage that we didn't give a shit who we were playing. Just go, you know, I remember going out to Kikini one Sunday morning like, and absolutely battling them. We just walked all over them in the challenge last blow. They couldn't believe it. Like, that this, a Limerick team would come down and done this to them. And we just thought nothing of it. It was just like away and on to the next game. But uh, we had some crack. Like we, we, we brought Galway down for points for a challenge match. And it was oh, yeah. pissing rain. <laughs> and the grass was about two feet high. And they were like dogs. And we bait the shy out up and down points. The knee was on fire. And your man came up to Willie after, the manager. And like we just destroyed him. Like we'd absolutely walk him off the field. But couldn't quite compute that Limerick had done this to him. And he shook Willie's hand. And we were playing awfully in the, in the championship the following week. And they just hammered off in the challenge. And he says to Willie, you know, Geez, well done. You'll give Offaly a right game, but next week. How are you, like? Who the fuck do you think you are? Like, you give Offaly a game. We're after a hockey game, you know, challenge here. We beat him to our in semi final after, and Willie went up to Randy and goes, Well, do you still think we give Offaly a game? Or after the match after. But, oh, I was yeah. serious, guy. Like, do you remember the day we put in the rag sheet and we made 15 subs at the same yeah. time, 10 minutes into the second half in the Monster Championship? That was Championship, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, it was war over it. Oh, Jesus, carnage. We just didn't give a but shit. You we were have so to yeah, you'd have to elaborate a bit more about that now. So you took, uh, off, took off 15 players. All in one go, yeah. So I think we played, we played Dublin in the championship on a Saturday. Game, yeah. yeah, and it was a horrend- really tough game. Dublin were a very good side. And Tippett had no game on the Saturday. And they made us play him in the Munster Championship on the Monday. And we just gassed. Like, we gassed. We, we, we gassed 10 minutes, 10 minutes to go to half time. They were out of their feet. And uh, I just remember going to Willie here, listen... This is gone. This game is gone here now. I couldn't give a shake about it. We just take them all off because we're playing Cork in the following Saturday. Sure, Willie was ruthless enough. He just goes grand. We didn't even ask anyone. Didn't the ref come here to say game over here? Like we're taking off fifteen. Sure, it was, ah, it was war over. The secretary came over with mint and everything. Was constantly nuts. It's good. It was funny though. Like, yeah, yeah, had to for- I presume you had to forfeit the game once he took off fifteen. Oh well, yeah, we forfeited the game. So the ref was like, "Left to forfeit the game." I was like, "Grand, just make sure you write down player welfare on your notes there." And <laughs> Off we went, but yeah, we got to the final in against Cork, and geez, it was a really good Cork team. I think a good few of them have gone on after as well, like they've had a loony and uh, Amy O'Connor, yeah, do you know what? We were right looking, we beat them, we beat them well below in a championship below in Cork, and um, that would have been one of the first times I think the Limerick team had ever beaten Cork in a championship game. It was a real kind of I think it was a boost to the whole thing in general across all the three teams that that, that had happened. I think it gave a bit of confidence there, but. but for some reason, Amy O'Connor was playing soccer with Ireland and they thought maybe they were a bit arrogant kind of going, sure, look, we'll, we'll, we'll beat them here and we'll throw her on and finish the game. And sure, we came over the traps like, and we were up nine or ten points, I'd say, 20 minutes into the first half. So on she comes in and she's lethal. Like, she's class. She's, one, like, she's probably one of the best minors I've ever seen. Like, obviously, she's gone on to be one of the best senior players in the country. Yeah. Yeah. But geez, yeah, we we're right lucky. We froze on the line that day. I remember it was a real learning experience and we were just hanging on by our fingertips for the draw. Um, but we absolutely battered them in the final then after we gave them an awful trim in the replay so um, it was great Like the, we played in Kilmallock in the first game and our away fixture was in Charleville then, and sure at Charleville inside the heart of Limerick Mogi all our players were going to school there fucking Grana up the road that he ran up the road uh, yeah that, that was it was great crack it was really great crack so Fiona um, the minors have been flying it because of Sheila's coaching and, and then, then, then Sully's coaching after it well, you were in Division 1, and again, you, you took that like ducks to water. Uh, you had a few fantastic wins, being the All-Ireland champions as well. 
Um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was good. Yeah, 2015, I'm not sure we did much really. We had semi-finalised, was the league, did we? No, in, in 2014, we beat Galway in the league. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, think, we did. They got, yeah. Off the play, they got off the plane that morning after all, didn't they? <laughs> so, <laughs> the last, the last so you, they couldn't care less so, about us like that. So you remember taking a foot in the gate of grounds, but you can't remember me <laughs> got, got with God, Ireland David, champions. That tells 40. you everything you need to know about Fiona Hickey. <laughs> 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 Can remember the photo shoot, but not, well, not the Ireland champions. I thought we were done. Sorry. Stick with the timeline uh, yeah. here, please. Stick with the timeline. That, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> Where did he beat Galway? In Kinmanock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. First, oh, first, round, first round of the league in 2014. So oh, we, yeah. couldn't, we couldn't beat their second team in 2013 and then we beat yeah. their first team. <laughs> yeah, that was actually well, great. Yeah. But as you said, they were just self-playing too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, we don't need to add that bit in. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Sheila, I, I'll continue on to you a season that you, you remember it. <laughs> 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 uh, after a couple of them wins, um, like, was an All-Ireland in your thoughts or was that still out of reach? Um, no, like I think that year we were very much aware that the only team that was going to beat us was probably ourselves. Which is which is probably a great way to be because you know you can't get too far ahead of yourselves because we had we knew what it was like to lose and we certainly didn't want to do that again. I suppose a lot of us had been through the middle the previous year is kind of in poor and the you know they weren't always poor setups. Sometimes it was poor buying. Like it, I don't think you could always blame the people that were over us. Um, so like we were some of us were had been on a journey that we didn't want to go backwards. So there kind of was no choice that year. That like we knew we knew that we were probably the best intermediate team that year but we also knew that if we got too far ahead of ourselves that we'd be caught like so it was a, a good way to be I think that's the thing that's a great mindset to to be in a, in a in a in a campaign like um but Sully uh, your minors have started kind of to go into a couple of dif- different panels um and juniors got a, a league final against Kerry I think um but there was a small bit of a stroke pulled was there yeah, that was, that was. Do you know what I'm? Ta- do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> uh, there's a bit, there, like the background for that league final is interesting because I remember the day after we won the minor. I think I'm nearly sure you drove a stone, Sheila, to somewhere below in Kerry, and we were dying. And uh, it was a draw, but there was a row in the sideline, and none of us were actually involved in the junior team at this stage, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I don't think so. We, there was a few of us drafted in to keep the peace <laughs> for the replay, but. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Limerick got off to a crack in starting that game. I think they scored four goals in the first half. Um, oh, who's the full forward? Remember, she's always getting goals. Sarah Collins, is it? Sarah Collins got bagged a few goals, and there's some men's got a couple more. Um, but about 10 minutes into the second half, we just fallen apart, and Kerry were running all over us. And we just sub on the junior team, because minors only just come back in, Tariff is given. She sent her back for the minors. Six foot one, class, rangy, great player. So we were all mic'd up and everything. We thought we were the business. So I remember raving over Joe about Jesus, just try and tire there, centre back maybe just for 15 minutes and we'll shore this thing up a little bit. And next come back order radar, she's not listed on the subs. What do you mean? She's not listed on the subs. So the manager had listed them all alphabetically. So he listed like two or three sub keepers, 16, 18, 19. She wasn't listed on the subs. Next thing I see a bit of commotion over on the far sideline or whatever. And I just, Obviously, clearly Tara's coming on. It comes on over the ten I have in the castle list. Like number twenty one, Maria Clancy replaces number six, Lisa Scanlon. Oh, Maria Clancy is five foot one corner forward. On comes Tara Fitz wearing twenty one. They swapped her, and there was a massive crowd. Because you remember though, this is in the heartland. Like this is in the castle west. Big crowd carry only over the border. On comes Tara, lords it. I'm on the radio. Oh, Joe, jeez, that someone going to there and tell her to wind it in a bit, or she's going to get player of the match here. And. Uh, <laughs> But like the bogey president everything was in, Aileen was up there. I, I, I don't know what I say to her after one stage, messing for three or four years later, but, or maybe this is the first time anyone's ever heard this. But <laughs> we were Kerry ringing on the Monday looking for the video of the match, saying it was for video analysis. That video never saw the light of day. Like, they, were, they were in Division 4 for years after. It was scandalous, really. So, yeah, so our first yeah. exclusive for uh, William <laughs> Turling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just make it clear, it was nothing to do with me. If I'm going to see anyone throw a few more games on and top of Joe, I think he's still suspended <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, carnage. But yeah, it's another trophy. It's a good win in fairness. The momentum that year was just. That's yeah. that's the thing, Fiona. Uh, the momentum just kind of continued to roll. So after being Galway, remember? <laughs> well, you, you just continued to win in all all age groups. Um, 
just what can you remember any of the feelings in the camp? We say seeing a good junior win, um, and then coming back in with the, with the intermediates. How was the feeling? Yeah, I suppose the the minors were unreal because they I suppose they knew nothing other than winning. Like so, they really brought that. I suppose as Sheila was saying, like there was a few of us there who knew like you know the real. We knew too, we knew too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too much, exactly. But the miners would really give you a great buzz because they had no fear and your training was brilliant. They were, you know, tearing strips off each other and it was just kind of, yeah, it was just the buzz of 2014. And as I said, the junior team, the miners ourselves, it was just, the buzz was incredible. And I suppose winning just kind of became a bit of a habit. Like, and I just, yeah, those minor victories were just unreal. And I, don't, I still don't think to this day they're, they're spoken about enough or it was it was probably the best achievement in Limerick Mogi history. Do you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. And it was just, yeah. it's never been spoken about. You know, we talk about our 2014 on Ireland. It was intermediate, you know, great and everything. But winning that minor A on Ireland was just unbelievable. And if, if, we, if they hadn't won that, not a hope we would have oh, won yeah. the intermediate. We've gone on to beat Cork a few times, won, gone on to win the 2017 Munster final. You know, there's, it just really set off just a great run at Limerick, in Limerick Mogi, you know. But you can nearly say that's the naivety of youth. Just they don't know anything yeah. else. Just they, they kind of won, and that's all they, they kind of knew. Yeah, I suppose when we were their age, we were playing under sixteen, and it was all B competitions. You know what I mean? B, you learn nothing from it. Like you know, we won two All Irelands. I'd say under sixteen B or we was minor B. I can't even remember because it meant nothing. Like you know, we were going out hammering teams. But like we would never have been able to step up to the A level. Well, we we should have been playing up in the A level to give us our, set ourselves a challenge, but it was just never. It was kind of like Limerick was happy out winning these. But maybe yeah, happy. that's the thing. It's like maybe you should have gone because it's like the following year. Yeah. Obviously, that's skipping head. Like we lost all those big players like Delay and Quiva Castello and all these, but like we still got to the semi final again the following year, which I nearly see yeah. as a bigger achievement because the. The team we were with was kind of that was kind of a golden group, even though they hadn't done much before. It was clearly that like clear that they were seriously talented and all. But like the following year, we probably put more effort into it, and um, it was much more professional, and we probably got more out of them as a group. They overachieved probably, whereas we probably just facilitated the 2014 group and achieving what they achieved. But like yeah, it's it's, it's probably look maybe we'll talk about it later. It's a problem in Limerick Mogi at the moment that you know we're kind of glorifying these getting to B finals and 16 yeah, minor but- getting. Yeah, but like any time like, yeah, like have played A, they've always been competitive. Like mm. I would have played under 16A. Um, now we did have Neil Mulcahy, which was obviously a serious <laughs> yeah. But we, like we beat Tip, blowing the rag in a Munster semi-final mm. years ago, a long time ago, 2004, I'd say. But she scored a, a, a long-range free t- with a goal. She scored a goal and we won and we got to the final. We lost to Cork and Charleville. Um, but like we won a, we won a Munster minor A. As well, like so. Anytime Limerick mm-hmm. have played at A, like it's not like they've been slaughtered. Now, obviously, there have been some beatings, like, and there was a couple mm-hmm. of years. But like in general, like you don't have, and you don't have to be winning them every year. I don't think either. Like, mm-hmm. but once you're competing and and getting players up to that grade, is probably that's, should be the goal. That's probably the big thing. change. Big change in Waterford Camogie came around when yeah. they stopped playing in B and started going up to A. And they won the odd one here and there, but we can even see it coming into you well now, like the like what like you know, Waterford are nearly like the academy you want to be putting everyone out of now, like the top, yeah. top young players coming Because I saw their under-16 team this year and there's ser- some serious players, like yeah. excellent forwards, like more Beck Cartons coming. Yeah. Whereas I don't think Limerick are creating any more evil guys, to be honest. No, that's, that's hard enough to do. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but Sheila, in the summertime of 2014, like the performances probably weren't up to top notch, but like you were still getting the results, I presume. Yeah, well, like, that's the key part once we were getting the results. Like, um, I suppose all along, like, sometimes in years gone by, we kind of maybe had performed well in the group stages. But as I said earlier, we probably hadn't preparation done, and then we are caught out come semi-final time. So I suppose in the back of our heads, we probably knew that we were always going to get through the group stage and mm-hmm. that the, it was the semi-final was going to be the big banana. So, like, we knew that we could just kind of get along through the group stage. Now, obviously, we never said that oh, we're obviously going to get out of the group, like, but... <laughs> I suppose we, 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 we did know that we were, once we performed to a certain level, like we were going to get out of it. And it was all kind of, I suppose, the lads, he probably in the background had a, a plan for peak. Like, so. I would like, say so, no. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you never you spoke too much credit there, no shoes. <laughs> I, I, I said it earlier. Yeah. We knew we had the 
the belief and I think it all as I said came from the miners from losing in 2013 we knew we were going to get better do you know what I mean and it wasn't even yeah. it wasn't arrogance it was just kind of you know it's intermediate hurling and we wanted to get up to senior and we knew yeah. we were good enough to get up to senior you know Senior team operating in intermediate to be fair, like Troy, like you went from playing in the in the springtime against the likes of Galway and Clare with a really good team that time. Like we played Antrim below and Brough. And like yeah. their their goalie had a baby three weeks previously. They all arrived down in cars. They'd only 15 <laughs> players. So like that's what some of the intermediate stuff was like absolutely yeah. pummeled them. And she still conceded two goals. <laughs> <laughs> we won well, by many recollection of that. <laughs> yeah. Cora Ford's gone out to mind her child on the sideline in between <laughs> banging two past Sheila, I think. But, but, uh, you can play the full backline from that again. <laughs> but I love this, the similarities you know, between. Back at that stage, actually, she oh, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't that retired. Was before back you were moved back, back in cornerback, keep you out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> the sim- similarities are kind of like I know you were performing at two different grades. One was intermediate, one was senior. But between yourselves and uh, and Wexford, when we talked to JJ and Ursula, like they knew that they were good enough to get to the later end of the summer, then peak at that time. And that's when they're peaking. And yeah. by what you were saying there, Sheila, it's, it's a very similar story. That's, you knew you were good enough to get out of the group, get to the later end of the championship. And that's when you wanted to peak and fire on. Yeah. And like I suppose even playing Division One Camogie that year was a huge boost. Was like that we weren't like we were competitive in those games. We weren't hammered from what I remember. Anyway. No. Um. So like we had a very positive experience <laughs> for once in our lives. <laughs> um. So like all of that was a huge boost, and it was good to have in the locker that Joe you know, we can compete with senior teams. So like we should be winning the intermediate play. Fiona, talk to me about the final. You had a a super tight win against uh, Watford in the semi final. Really competitive game. Um, it was probably a small bit different to other semi-final. Kilkenny kind of hammered uh, Kildare, so the preparation were two complete opposites. Uh, did you kind of did that stand to you that semi-final win? Oh, I say most definitely. It gave us a kind of a bit of a scare, Do you know. Like again, as I said, we, we had the belief and we knew we were good enough, but geez, that kind of brought us back down to earth a small bit anyway. And just the toughness of that game, it just it, yeah, it definitely you couldn't say it didn't it, it didn't stand to us like you know it, it really we got over the line there and kind of knew then getting back to Crow Park that you know having that tough game behind us that we were kind of ready to face anything I suppose. Do you remember the, it's like I, I, I was thinking I was I was losing my mind, but like we went in an awful session of Waterford the week before that game. Do you remember we What's played Wexford? It was because I was trying to think and I was like, no, I couldn't have been. I couldn't have been. And then I remember we, we stopped in Carroll on the way home. Do you remember Dick Finn took the bus to Carroll oh, and yeah. we went to Dr. Cullen Park? We went to Dr. Cullen Park, yeah. We, like, we played yeah. Wexford below on a Saturday. Like, when you think about yeah. preparation, like, and we drew them below. If I'm not mistaken, geez, I hope I'm not hanging out to try now. Or said Jacob hit Laura O'Neill an awful clip and she ended up in hospital. And she went to hospital, yeah. She, was she went to hospital, hospital. And we went to stay in a hotel in Waterford for a banding trip because the county board had promised us a band trip. And we just went on an awful session. A week before the game. It was a very big week before, was it? It was, it was 100 percent because we, we stopped in Carroll on the way home. I remember distinctly going to Dr. Cullen Park. I remember a big thin drove so You think yeah. about it, like, remember Joe always said after, like, the, the only time he's ever frozen the sideline in the match was like five minutes to go. We were hanging on against Wall. I remember they were coming back, coming back, we were playing for the win. I'd say he's probably thinking, geez, how am we going to explain this to the county board? All the money we spent, and we had him on the lash for him, Waterford last Saturday with us. <laughs> So it was a great bonding experience. It was the reason we got over the line. The <laughs> so, so you went on a, a basically a piss up mm. the Saturday before the All Ireland semi final. That would be I great, think David. Yeah. A few bonding drinks. That's all it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very diplomatic. We, we went to Curacao, didn't we? Do you remember we were running in Curacao? Yeah. Well, on the Sunday. Running. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. to run it off. <laughs> Ran it off on the Sunday around Curacao. It, 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 it was roasted. It was roasted. Up the and everything. It was rolling, I wasn't yeah. going up the dunes anyway, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, you would have whistled, you would easy job. <laughs> no, no, geez, I, you know, man, I, this is not to do with me. I was very much carrying bottles at this stage. No, it was, uh, <laughs> none of this has anything to do with me. I'd uh, t- taken the minor win and slipped into the, in very much into the back room <laughs> the team, at this stage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, she, Sheila, you, so you won a junior All Ireland uh, against Car- a very good Carlo team, should I say. Yeah. Um, on the way, but we say was the previous year spoken to like in the build up to that game? Um, I don't think we ever really spoke about it much as a group, but like I suppose in small groups, we were like 
there was huge hurt there, like as in we were really very disappointed. I, I remember being really thick after the game. Everyone was telling us how proud they were of us, and we I was like proud of what? Like we lost, like, and they were like, oh, oh, Shakur Park and this and that, and I was like, yeah, no, <laughs> like, and dear defense, I would have a good laugh at that because she always reminds me of it. I actually bought a toothbrush for the day after, and I called the toothbrush proudness. I was like, if people don't ever leave me alone, <laughs> um. <laughs> So yeah, like I remember, I remember before the All Ireland, I made some. We had somebody was taking photos of us after we lost All Ireland. I I don't know. There was definitely photos of us all, and we were in a huddle. And we were we were all crying. I was on the floor anyway. I'd say someone was trying to <laughs> was trying to pick me up. But I remember I made a thing, um, and on one side I had like the pictures of us in Crow Park in twenty thirteen after losing, and on the other side I had pictures of like the minors and the juniors after winning. And I remember I think Joe actually picked it up at halftime, and he said it's either this or this, and. Yeah. Kind of just went from there then. And I actually remember, I could be wrong, but I think the Down lose the junior and they had lost the junior the year before. And I think I remember when we heard that result, we were like, right, like just because we lost last year doesn't mean that yeah. we're a Titans head here. Like, I could be wrong now with the team, but I'm nearly sure that whoever lost the junior final that day had lost it the year before as well. I think actually the Down won, but we told you they lost just to sharpen it up. I said, I said, but as I said at the beginning, like it, again, it kind of shows the kind of culture that he had, the mindset he had, that he, wa- he didn't want the, this proud, cliche type thing. He just wanted to get back on the horse and get back into a winning, a winning camp, camp. Yeah, and like a lot of and what you're doing is really trying to change. Is like a lot of time when you read um, like articles about matches, like everyone played well. Like they did the about like the corner back to the corner forward, and oh, everyone had a great game and blah blah blah. But like. Oh, but we just, we just, yeah. But after thirteen, we just, 2013, we just didn't want to hear it. Like, I, like I literally was sick to the teeth of people telling me we were great, we were this, and we were that. I was like, we're not. Like, we lost that by Like, but you got there. I was like, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm still bitter. I don't know if you noticed, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fiona, so again, you didn't get anything easy against the Kenny, and they had a serious, serious team. And um, Catherine Ford, Foley, I just have a team or. Team here, Catherine Foley, Stacey Quirk, uh, Megan and Anna Farrell, and I think all of them went on to win a senior All Ireland as well with yeah, Kilkenny. Yeah. So we said that that team, that win overall has has like what he won against just shows the quality that he were. Yeah, I suppose um, it shows that we so were senior players playing in in an intermediate league. I suppose and the same as them. Um, but no, it was it was it was totally different in thirteen. I think we're turning thirteen with ten minutes to go. I was nearly crying because I couldn't see us winning it. Like, but well, 10 minutes ago in 2014, I was nearly crying with joy, thinking there's nothing mm. going to take this away from us. Like, so it was just, it was great, great, great feeling now. And Sh- Sheila, so we kind of kicked off the, the kind of podcast with um, your campaign or your appearance on the Sunday game. Um, kind of nine years later, you kind of avenged that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was actually thinking about this earlier. I, I don't know if you remember, Hickey, but remember someone made a comment about that our full back were there for the take. I remember oh, it was we next were, Darcy. It was next we were Darcy. Watching, we, were watching <laughs> the we were absolutely raging. <laughs> and we met her at the All Stars after, remember? And we were always yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And we didn't I never got my redemption. We held all the way to 12, or he'll kick me to 12 points there for the take. It was a scandalous yeah. comment. Scandalous. <laughs> Am I, am I right in saying then, Adrian, you kind of took over as coach the following year? So you <laughs> had a minor, junior, and uh, intermediate All Ireland. You took over, and then they just went all belly up. That would be a fair assessment, David. Yeah, I think. No, I thought um, you had a good team as good year. You know what? <laughs> it actually, I suppose, it was a good year. So, I, like, I've have, I have a lot of regrets about 2015. In answer to, I think, um, look, we had a savage group, and I think, he, like. You know, we didn't overdo it on the celebrations with a couple of right nights, but I think the feeling was there that the intermediate win was just a pathway back to where you should be anyway, um, with the talent that was there. And, geez, we really went for it. Like, we really went for it. Um, I remember early in February 2015, I was managing the minors now at this stage as well. Well, really, it stepped away. We hammered Dublin in the minor championship over Kamalak. And on the same day, the seniors drew with Galway and Ballon Slow in the league. On the same day, like, Joe, that, it was nearly peak peak Limerick boy, whatever about winning trophies and stuff like that, we were getting yeah. to a level of performance that hadn't been there before. Uh, I remember hammering Wexford in that league, absolutely battered them over in Brough. Uh, 10 or 11 points, hammering Tipperary. And do you know, I think a moment came, we, we should have beaten Cork in the league semi-final over in Charleville. We were two points up and Mull got a ball, she put over her eyes closed, and Quiva got a ball, and she put over her eyes closed. 
like the two players you'd want the ball to, to come to and Cork came back and Thompson got a hold of the game and they beat us by point and it just it deflated the whole thing and I think the mistake maybe I would have made as a coach and something I've learned a lot from was like we really went for that league and we had a very small panel and we could try and pick them up then and, and try and get to another level again for the championship. We never quite did it. We beat Offaly. That was a great game actually. We beat Offaly inside and brought them all the way back to Newcastle. Yeah, right. yeah. Threw them into the small dressing room. They had a by a point. Roast and hot day. Great crack. But Cork beat us by a couple of points then and Wexford beat us in the right game but on Wexford that we probably should have won as well. But on Wexford Park, Kay Kelly and we the last quarter now and they got over the line and uh, we went up for a dead rubber game then above in Galway. And right, Galway yeah, Galway beat the shit out of us above in fucking Athens, right? Yeah. In. That, I, think Joel, I think Joel had enough at that stage as well because I suppose like he himself and Sean had, were pretty much running the whole show. Like They weren't just running the team, they were running the county board, they were doing the fundraising. I think he was withered from it and I was kind of tick with the results and there was a few things going on in the background with the county board then at that time as well. And, I, was kind of I think Joe got well. in a bit of trouble uh, with the Hurley when the Hurley bill came in. I think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Willie finally sent him the bill for the Hurleys that you all thought were free, and it catapulted and then he capsized the whole thing. <laughs> but Jan, so if you wanna, did he? If if I was a bit older, I suppose maybe I would have like if I, if I wasn't as green, maybe I suppose this. I often wonder, thinking back on it, like if we'd have stayed together as a group for another couple of years, would we have achieved a bit more? It is. It's definitely a regret, you know. But look. It's just what their, their decisions you make at the time, isn't it? I suppose it's the way it goes. But it, like when you said there that you kind of that's your one regret that you went all out in the league. Mm. Like, like I don't, I, I know the two girls didn't haven't heard the the podcast with the Wexford guys, um, but they said league means that, and who remembers winning the league? It's all about championship. Yeah. Whatever it, it, group you're playing in, or um, it's all about championship. So it's yeah. uh, you've learned that. It's obviously something you've taken away from. I haven't won a league since then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look. Are you doing what you Wexford yeah. would have won uh, three, the three in a row there. They would have had experiences of winning championships. So I know you can say the league means nothing, but winning that league in 2013 was huge for us. And you know, even getting to league semifinals was important at a, some, a certain stage. It would be important now, I don't think. But you know, it was important to us at that time as well, I think. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we probably had the approach that look, we had a very young team and we kind of wanted to keep the momentum going. And, and keep the winning going, yeah. Yeah, and keep the winning going and just the whole thing. Yeah, look, it probably ended on a bit of a sore note. It's a shame. Like, it's great to have this conversation now because you're kind of laughing at all the memories and the stories and everything. And it kind of gives you a, a kind of good vibes about it, I suppose. But at the time, maybe, it would end, for me anyway, it would have been a sour taste in the mouth. But, but it is what it is. It's sport. You move on, on to the next team. Exactly. Uh, Fiona, if you want to answer first and then Sheila... Um, like the success didn't end there. You, you won a senior league or mun- senior monster title in 2017. But as a whole group, is there a bit of a regret there that you didn't kind of push on and win more as, as a really good group? Yeah, I suppose. I think in 2016, um, I still have the the slitter inside um, in the room that we we beat Cork below and. Mallow, um, we would beaten them actually in twenty six or in February of that month of that year as well in the league. Lone Raquel, it was an awful day. The ball was stuck in mud. People were bending down to pick it up, like it was just a horrific day. So I think we beat them that day. And we didn't really take much from it because, like, I mean, it was great and everything, but the conditions were so bad. We kind of um, was that the day Sarah Sarah couldn't play or Sarah played that match. I think she, she, she found out she got the virus after. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, she she, she had Nikki later that year anyway. But um, it was um, like, that was great. And then we actually played them in Mallow, and we didn't have Sarah that day. And we kind of we were kind of like, oh Jesus, I don't know. I didn't hold. I knew we were, you know, we were after building a lot, and uh, we beat them that day below without Sarah. Like, and that was just a great day. As I said, I took the slitter off the ref. I'd say after the match and ran away with it. Was, that was really one of the the highlights of, of my time with Limerick anyway. Which is just it was a random league match in Mallow, but it just showed that like we were at that level now and I think always we always had a great rivalry ourselves anyway with Cork I'm not sure they thought they'd much of a rivalry with us but like beating them was just huge for us and then I suppose that monster that monster final in 2017 was just one of the one of the greatest days Cleveland Lions came out of the came out of the blocks racing and scored a cracker of a goal like one of the best goals I've ever seen anyway and 
it was just, it really was a great day and we were on such a high after it. And I just like, it was the first round of championship now, I was actually on the own honeymoon at the time, but the first round of championship, um, I remember the girls were playing Offaly and Offaly were always a bit of a, uh, I suppose, a banana skin for us. It was like the teams you expected, you'd always kind of, we always had a confidence thinking we'd beat them, but it was always only a point or two in it either way. And I suppose we got off to a bad start that year, Sheila, wasn't it? That that, that match really kind of, we'd, we'd eyed up that game as one we would be winning, you know, um, and that didn't happen. I suppose we, it kind of ended badly then that, that year. And, and Sheila, do you think there was a regret that uh, yeah. you, you could have well, achieved actually the, the last game I played for Limerick was in 2015 against Galway. I actually, I fell that day and I caught my leg and I ended up getting um, a really bad infection in my leg. Um, and I also had to get an operation on my left leg. So I suppose my memories of 2016-17 was pretty yeah. much a mental, tor- a mental torture that I put myself through. Um, oh. But no, they were. I do. I remember that game in uh, in Raquel in the pouring rain, and I was like, "Oh yeah, the one time that I feck off, they they, they go in the, the B Cork, and then they did it again." And I was like, "I forgot to say." No, twenty fifteen. I was actually in. I was I was fine, like because I thought I'd be back. I suppose seventeen was. I was. I knew I was coming to the end, so I suppose personally, sixteen and seventeen and eighteen weren't the best years that I had. But um, that that monster final day was a brilliant day. Was, um, back in Chernobyl, it was. A huge, a huge. Well, it should have been a huge moment that was pushed on from. But I suppose there, there would be regret um, amongst the girls now that they probably didn't push on from that. But she, yeah. uh, not to say, like obviously it was, you know, devastating that you weren't there winning that with us. But like Laura O'Neill, the goalie that took over from you, looked up to you so much. Like, and you coached her better than any coach we ever had. You know what I mean? So like, you really did play an instrumental part in that. So you thanks, know. For, thanks, Fiona. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I think we kind of all give out as well when Kamori is not in the media enough. Um, but this might be backwards so in a way, but Limerick Kamori was definitely in the media, but it was for all the wrong reasons um, in the winter over the, the management search. Uh, I think you were part of in the middle of it, uh, Sheila, with Declan Nash's management team. Uh, yeah, so I had been, I had gone to Australia. Um, after I I left the pet well I didn't leave the pedal after I retired I suppose and um, when I came back Declan rang me he asked me, he originally asked me to go back playing but like the, I just my legs I couldn't so then he asked me would I get involved and I suppose in my own head again probably a little bit selfishly I kind of had a bit of redemption that I wanted for myself kind of that I had finished so poorly like if I'd known what I knew in 2015 I absolutely would not have gone through the torture of 16, 17, and 18. Um, so yeah so I was involved. Um, with, again, with Laura and, and the two Claire's, um, I suppose the biggest disappointment from my point of view is that, and I know Fiona, you'll back this up, is that Declan and, and Dara and Michelle, like they're just such nice people. And I know it's not about being nice people, but like Declan, literally, I'd say if you asked him on any of those girls after their breakfast, he knew it every single day. He was so invested in their lives, in like what they're doing in college. Like if someone wasn't in good form at training, he knew like, and he knew why. Um, he, and it was just so disappointing to see and it was just so bizarre like the things we were fighting about, fighting about was all the stuff that we've been talking about in this podcast like we were fighting about the best minors being allowed to play with the flagship team in Limerick like it's still something that I still I don't I don't understand it I don't get it it's the same with the juniors like there was an argument about if a junior is playing well with the juniors which they were and if they had the opportunity would they be allowed to proceed senior team the answer was no like as in I still I just I <laughs> I just, I don't get it, like, I don't understand. It's, it's funny you say that, actually, because uh, I remember actually in 2014, Sinead Mack was flying for the juniors. I actually, I actually used that example. That and missed the junior and then final I, I was told and came on and back, yeah. But I was told there was uproar in the background, and I was like, yeah, and that's the uproar. key part, is that there was uproar in the background, and the players didn't know anything about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm sure those things happen. I know, I know it wasn't easy for... Sinead or for the junior girls at that st- stage. It wasn't easy for girls. Sinead. She missed out in a junior final in Money Gall and played in the intermediate <laughs> final in Crow Park. No, I know, but like, <laughs> see what, what you, what you what girls would be so conscientious, like she would have been conscientious about leaving the junior team and being like, oh, like she wouldn't, she'd be totally the type of girl that wouldn't want someone to think that she had notions about herself that I want going off playing with the intermediates after playing with the juniors earlier. But like, there was never that attitude, like, because everyone understood that the, that the intermediate team and that team were the flagship team that everyone was trying to get to. And I would argue that that's probably not there right now. No, I, I could have joined up thinking. Yeah. 
it's like, that continuity as well it's management how, how long like look at Anne Downey in Kilkenny how long was she in charge for 13 years or something or that's a bit mad is it was 13 that's a bit mad yeah she was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, she, 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 yeah. she was in charge for a long time like and we've just never like you said that yourself Sully that like you were disappointed that 2015 ended on a sour note for E and mm. you know we've had management since that have ended on sour notes and it's it's just I don't I just don't understand as you said Sheila it's, it's bizarre it's just bizarre the, and like the, the most probably the most bizarre thing is that the players want to Declan Declan wants to go back like <laughs> most of the time the players don't want the manager and like then there's a row but at the county board oh, sometimes want the manager, manager. Uh, just, like, just, it, just disclaimer: we, we have no uh, communication from Declan Nash to say he wanted to go back. <laughs> <laughs> but like, and like, there was, there was, like, there was no one saying that sh- what what we were doing, and I, I'd even, I wouldn't put we, it's like what the lads were doing was perfect, like, and they knew it, and they had lots of plans for bringing in other people and like trying to up the game and other step, and like, what could they do to improve? Like, it, it was, and like, the big thing about, it, and I, I'm singling out Declan in it, but like. He likes similar to yourself, sorry, no ties, like no club, like he doesn't even have a daughter, like as in his, and I know I, they, he, he went to the county board and he spoke to the county board and like someone said, someone in the bo- in the room, I believe, asked like, why, like, why do you want to do this? And he, he said that he wants to see, he wants to see young girls that want to play Komogi for their county. And that's simply all he wanted to do, like. And like, no, there was things that he didn't have. And like, of course, there's technical things, but in my eyes, probably tick the box and he was willing to do those tick the box exercise but if like it just came to a stage where if you're not wanted like it was just going to be a nightmare like yeah there was probably too many hurdles to try and jump over to try and jump over yeah um so i suppose we've got thinking on the future again pose it to body fiona if you want to answer first what do you think of the future of limit Komogi? where is it heading or is it heading in a good place well like i suppose the main thing really for limit Komogi in the future we we touched on it already is this they need to be playing in the A competitions. Um, I think the Komogi, I suppose, in schools at the moment, you had a few great wins there a few years back, uh, Sheila and Laurel Hill, and the Komogi's going very well in there. Um, I suppose it needs to be pushed. I suppose more, it's it's all starting with the grassroots. There was talk of um, a Komogi Academy being set up, but sure, nothing ever got going. And it's kind of like one of those things that's like, here everybody have a medal like you know anyone anyone could just get into you know any of these I suppose training camps for under 14s or you know under 12s under 14s and I just think they need to be playing at the highest level they need to be playing they, if they go out and got hammered against the Galways the Chiefs the Corks the Waterfords they'd, they'd learn more from that than playing in these Mickey Mouse competitions and being happy with that so that's that's all I would really say in it is that they need to be playing at the at the best level they can be playing, you know, I, they want to see yeah. I think that, as you said there, the importance of a academy, like you, we've seen what it does, that, or did for the uh, Limerick Senior Hurlers, um, and there's no reason that can't be repeated and replicated on the Camogie front, front. Yeah, I think there there is, there is an academy, as far as I'm aware. Um, but I'd go back to Fiona's point there I'm saying for years and years and years like I actually think secondary schools are so 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 important in this but I'd argue that like and nothing to do with Limerick County Board to be fair either like the structure and it's probably a, a real traditional thing like I know in our school we'd have it's, it's not even a fight but like there'd be hockey and and Komogi so like the hockey structure is that there's a there's a, a league for first years there's a league for second years and then there's a, a league for we'll say junior which would be up to maybe fourth year and then you've got your 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 senior league whereas in Camogie we've got a junior and we've got a senior so like we've got first years trying to get games up against fourth years like uh, we have loads we have so many Camogie players like and um, like time-wise and logistically in school like we it's just not feasible for us to put out two teams like it just it it's we just can't do that like so we'd find that we're like first and second years oh, I don't think I don't feel like we tried to set up a game at G a few times I don't think our first year has played one Camogie match this year now I know COVID and all that came into it but like we find that we're having to do a lot of the work and it's not even I'm not complaining that we have to do it but like we need help to to put the structures in place and to have competitions that they can play in like and not even I'm not even talking about cup, um, like really competitive like as in just matches that are set up um <laughs> And it, like even I don't know what you were saying there, Fiona. Like sometimes we get really excited when we see them coming into ball wall and they have their Limerick development check. And we're like, yes, like really good players coming. In. And some of them can barely hit the ball. Like and we're like, like exactly. It's like 
give them all a, a t-shirt and forget about coaching them or forget about having <laughs> some stuff happen weekly forget about this and that but here give them a jersey and a gear bag and they're you know it's yeah. just like i think i think sometimes the ideas are there but sometimes the follow-through isn't always like what yeah. it should be yeah it's a, it needs a bit of strategic yeah, like I love, get, I love, let's, to, let's see, I love to see them like sure. open it out mm-hmm. that anyone that has a real genuine interest in Limerick Mogi, sit them all down at the table. Like, what are the things you want to get out of it? Like, give people jobs leaving that meeting. Like, don't just have the meeting for the sake of it to say, oh yeah, we had that meeting with all those people. This came up and then nothing ever happens. Like, mm-hmm. I go to the meeting. I want to know what do I do leaving the meeting and who do I report to in two weeks' time to say that I've done. Ex- and like, there are some really, really good people involved in, in Limerick. Like, there is. Yeah. Like, I know. And, in, and some, in fairness, as well, she like. The, I've had to deal with Paul in in UL and like he's a sound guy. God, is like none of what you said here is anything against oh, no. Paul. I think no. like my feeling is that the group look, you're never going to win with one group, Joe. Um, but they, like they you'll see it there, even fine senior team in Clare now, but like he won three under twenty ones and you know, like you need that bit of consistency, which he'd won in two thousand and nine as well. So he had that you had to win in two thousand and nine, he won again in twelve, so different groups coming through and minor. Like realistically it's, I think you could you could change the senior manager every second year and it's not really going to make a whole point of difference if you have nothing coming through. I think there's very few players starting for the Limerick team now who weren't either on that minor team in 2014 or already on the intermediate team in 2014. There's been no new bug coming through, you know. And like even in UL there now, the players we're looking forward to getting in this year, like we've, you know, we've a couple of the tip seniors, we've a couple of the water seniors that are doing their leave and you know, a couple of the Cork and Kinney Galway and I don't mean this in any way, there isn't a single Limerick player that we're hoping will come in because they're just not out there. You know, like the dykes of, I suppose, uh, Sophie and Quiva and Derby and all, like, these were already on our radar 2015. There's been nothing new since that group have come through. And like, I, I think that, I, that, you know, that group at the moment have been maybe let down by the lack of development that has come after them. It's, been, it's, it's a shame, really. You know, it's yeah, because I, I know I, this year I did a little bit with the, no, it was very small, but with the goalies with the under 15s. And like the people with them have have great ideas, like but they just don't have enough backup or other mm. people with them. Like they're trying to do everything, and and even we found that to an extent last year. Like I know Fiona, like if we if we saw Fiona in the stand that I did the matches last year, we had to give her the Twitter account like to update the Twitter. Like Claire, Claire McNamara, who was on the panel like for for a couple of games, or she was doing her leaving search, I think. So like she was traveling with the team, but was doing the Twitter account like. Like those are things that Declan and Dara and Michelle and them had to be worrying about. Like was is are our games being promoted enough? <laughs> is it updated on Twitter? Like, it's just stuff that they shouldn't have to worry about. Like, it, like that should all be ticked off. And like, in fairness, and that's not even at the county board, like, it's so hard to get people to do, to do these jobs. Like, um, so like, we have a lot of work to do, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> in a way, it's kind of- In that might or in that uh, committee, I know it's Sheila. <laughs> you, uh, yeah, Sheila is the committee. To- Exactly. But we, know, better, we better wrap it up. But we, we do have a few. Uh, we do have a few Instagram questions for you. So uh, Sheila Henry Henry Martin wants to know: Will James you mind him be the next Camogie president? <laughs> no. He must. No. Okay. <laughs> Simple as that. Uh, we had a question in from Anna Kylie as well. Want to know: Did you guys have much success at underage level? We kind of covered off that. You uh, you pretty much did, didn't you? At different at different levels. Yeah, but I didn't actually. I didn't really play. I didn't actually play. I played one year of camogie before I played on that senior team. Which I, was, <laughs> I was actually playing with the boys. Before. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So that's yeah. uh, kind of your excuse for leaving those five goals on the. Side. Yeah. Oh yeah. I I know. It was your first day. It was your first day. And, all, and also, I, also, I was barely five foot. So I couldn't even reach the goalpost. Yeah. <laughs> but that that's excellent, guys, and we we better wrap it up there. Like that's that's an hour of of really interesting conversation there. That we've had um, again just big thank you and appreciation on our behalf of, for joining us and telling us the, them stories behind the, the incredible year of 2014 and I really appreciate it again we're in a pandemic what else will we be doing david <laughs> <laughs> thanks guys. that was really interesting sully wasn't it um like we had great insight to to 2014 and the limerick success of uh of 2014 looking yeah. forward to, to next week already who do we have yeah, definitely, Davey. It was great. I suppose, for, geez, for myself, it was nearly like therapy there. I suppose, look, we mentioned there during the podcast, maybe the way it ended for us in Limerick had left a bit of a bitter taste, but reminiscing on all the stories there and the crack you had and everything like that definitely gives you the good feeling again. So it's great to do it. The two lads are, two lads are great crack as well. Next week, we have uh, the Waterford episode. So we've got their ex-manager, Don O'Rourke, and their two-time all-star, Beck Carton, on just talking to us about the journey Waterford Camogie have come on, I suppose, from being junior 
um, as, as, as recently as 2011 or 12 and to, to where they are now competing at senior level and, and the success they're having. So, yeah, we look forward to that. So thanks to everyone for listening. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, whatever platform you're on. Um, and we'll see you next week. Thanks very much. Cheers, guys.